Praise the Lord. Once again, I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good to be in the presence of God today. Are you all happy this morning? I'm glad to see Pastor Shibu Samuel worshiping with us and thank you for coming. We have been friends for a long time and I appreciate all of you for being here. Thank you for, uh, we are missing some of the families. They are traveling. Some people are uh, on the way to India and some of them are already going to India and different parts of the world. Please remember them in our prayers. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank the Lord for our Spanish service. I appreciate Pastor Jose and Sister Blanca for the wonderful gift and uh, the kind words you spoke. It's a privilege to uh, minister together for the glory of God. Let us thank the Lord for our Spanish service. Hallelujah. And, uh, we are blessed with the wonderful pastors and their love and care is so much appreciated. Thank the Lord for all our pastors. May the Lord bless you and use you mightily for the glory of God. And uh, my uh, nephew and family is uh, here this morning. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us. May the Lord bless us. And I'm going to um, start a new topic this morning. It is very good. And uh, I'm, I know that as a church, we are praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And uh, that is uh, instruction from the Lord. Psalm 122, 6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And we continue to do that. May the Lord give them victory and success in everything that we do. We stand with Israel and we pray for Israel. And so that we will be also blessed by standing with them. Hallelujah. This year we have been continually receiving the comfort of the Lord uh, for many of the many areas that we have been uh, going through. And uh, Psalm 23, 4 was the key verses, key verse that we have been uh, speaking. You know, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your road and your staff, they comfort me. So that's what we are receiving from the Lord. So the topic I'm going to cover today is very important and it is uh, very good to learn and understand the end time and uh, what's happening in this world right now. So this will be an introductory sermon. I will be speaking about this. I don't know how long. So we will stop when, it, when I complete what the Lord assigned me to do. So the top heading is the time we are living in. The time we are living in. This will be the part one introduction. So whether you believe it or not, the time we are living in is an end time. How many of you understand that? It's an end time. So I'll be speaking about the second coming of the Lord, the rapture, the signs, and everything that we are seeing right now. It is very important and interesting to learn the Bible says about the end time. You know, we are in the last days. So remember that. That is very important for us to understand. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5 says, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. That means terrible times will come. How many of you can understand that we are living in a terrible time? Bible says perilous time will come. So Bible is telling us, you must know this. Terrible times will be coming. What are the, some of the in incidents that say, some of the things that we need to watch. For men will be lovers of themselves. You are watching that, you are experiencing that. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. This is all from the Bible. I'm reading from the Bible, okay? Second Timothy. Unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal. Despires of God. Despises of, of good, sorry. Headstrong, 
lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. So Bible is giving us the instruction and some of the things that are happening and we are experiencing on a daily basis. So it is very important for us to understand the time that we are living in. You know, we are all waiting for the second coming of Jesus. And uh, we know there is a word called rapture. Rapture is, that particular word is not in the Bible. And, but we know that even the word Bible is not in the Bible, right? So we can take rapture is not in the Bible. The second coming is different from rapture. We need to understand that. The second coming is different from rapture. You know, the second coming is the answer to the prayer that the churches, church has been praying for 2,000 years. Now we say, Matthew chapter 6, 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that we are telling, Lord, you come, let your will be done. But the rapture, you probably have heard this term, it is a real event, it could happen at any time. That is the seriousness, it's a real event. It can happen at, everybody say any time. We don't know the time, any time. Some would say you can't even find the word rapture in the Bible, that's right. To that point, you can't find the word Bible is in the Bible, No. Can you find the word Trinity in the Bible? No. So that's not an argument that rapture is a real thing. It is going to happen at any time. So I just wanted to define what is rapture. We need to understand what is rapture. Rapture is that future event when Christ would rescind from heaven and uh, they resurrected the bodies of believers whose spirit has already gone onto the heaven and then and he will be reunited with the loved one, loved who has preceded us. You know, if we die, our spirit goes to God's presence and our body stays in the ground. When the rapture comes, our body is going to be resurrected. Yes, a bodily resurrection will happen. Now, if you are on the people on the earth, you are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That is what rapture is. It's a long definition of rapture. Let me repeat it again. Rapture is the future event. It is a future event. It's going to take place at any time. When Christ will rescind from heaven, Christ will come from heaven. And the resurrected, resurrect the bodies of believers. So he will resurrect the bodies of believers whose spirit has already gone on the heaven and then and he will be, and, and we will be reunited with the loved one who has preceded us. So there is a reunion happening. So we lost our loved ones. So we will be reunited with them. And if we die, our spirit goes to God's presence and our body stay in the ground. When the rapture comes, our body is resurrected. So we will get a resurrected body. A bodily resurrection happens. Now if you are one of the people on the earth, you are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So we need to be preparing our life to meet our Savior Jesus Christ. So the Greek word used for uh, rapture is harpasso, H-A-R-P-A-C-O, harpasso. 
the meaning is take forcibly. So it is not with your permission, you will be caught up in the air without your permission. It is the Lord's choice. You will be taken forcibly. Don't tell Lord, don't take me now. I have certain things to be settled here. My, my kids' marriage has not happened. You know, I haven't reconciled with somebody. Don't take me now. No. You don't have a say. It is by force. You'll be forcefully taken. Or to snatch. You, you know, the Lord will come and snatch from all your, you know, all your belongings and everything. You know, you, you cannot, you know, take anything. You just snatch away. And to be caught up. So her parcel means to take forcibly. You don't have any say. Snatch. Snatch means something is in my hand. If somebody can come and forcibly snatch it from me, it's gone. And it's caught up. Matthew chapter 24, which we don't know when it is happening. 36 through 44 says, but of that day an hour, no one knows. So don't believe if you hear somebody is prophesying Jesus is going to come on November 30th, 2023. No, that is a false prophecy. Don't believe that. Bible says that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. It is a secret. It has not been revealed to anyone by your heavenly father. So that means if you don't know something about it, is, you are sure that it is going to happen at any time. But we don't know the hour or the time, but it is a definite thing that is going to happen. But what we need to do, we need to be serious about our Christian life. We need to prepare our life. And we need to make sure that when the Lord comes to take us, the rapture happens. So we are willing and joyfully enjoying that particular moment. It says, but as the day of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. You know, in Noah's time, everyone was in their own ways and means and they're enjoying the life. God spoke to Noah, prepare an ark. I'm going to destroy the entire world. And I have mercy on you and your family. And build an ark. No one heard about the rain. God specifically instructed him how to construct the ark. And as just like a fool, Noah obeyed and gave himself to the plan of the living God. It says, the Bible says, as the days of Noah were also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. The world that we are living in right now. People are not at all worried about what is happening. No care, nothing. You know, they said, this is, this is my permanent place that I can enjoy. No. For us, in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking. This is what happening. Marrying and giving in marriage until the day that, the, that Noah entered the ark. At that time, people realized, hey, something is happening. Hey, people are missing from us. They said they will get an opportunity. They saw the rain coming. It is increasing on the earth, the water. They started, everything belongs to them has been floating. Only Noah's ark is safe. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. So clear. The Bible is so clear. Jesus told to us. That the symbolic things. What happened in the Bible. In Noah's time. 
Children of God, we are, are we not living such a time as this? Then it says, two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. It is very serious. Don't get left alone. Two women will be grinding at the mill. Nowadays nobody grinds anything. Don't worry about that part. You'll be still doing something else. One will be taken and other left. Watch therefore. Everybody say, watch therefore. For you do not know what hour our Lord is coming. But know this. That if the master of the house had known that hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. So the Bible is asking us to be watchful, just like a master watching over the household. Therefore, you also be ready. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. An unexpected time, our Lord will come. Rapture will happen. We don't want to get left alone. And that's the reason we need to understand the time we are living in is very, very important. Understanding the time and the prophecies and the word of God. You know, in the Bible we can see that rapture, the symbolic raptures happened in the Bible. You may say it's highly impossible. How is it happening? It's happened in the Bible. Genesis chapter 5, 23 and 24. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God to him. Hallelujah. As a rapture happened in the Bible, Enoch, God took him. No one has seen him. He lived in this world. 365 years, everyone knew Enoch. Man of influence. One fine moment, he did one thing. He worked with God. Child of God, you are called and separated and bought with a price to walk with God. The rapture is a privilege of a child of God, those who walk with God. If you walk with God, you will reign with Him. Hallelujah! Your life in this world is very short. But if you want to reign with Christ Jesus, we need to make sure that we need to walk and we must walk in his ways and in his presence. Hebrews chapter 11, 5 says, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. He was a man of faith. He lived and walked by faith. The Bible says because he did that, he has taken away. This is a process of rapture. We will be taken away, snatched away. We will be forcibly taken. That's what happened to Enoch. And he was not found because God had taken him. Children of God, God can take us. That is rapture. God has taken away. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. What is the lesson that we can learn from here? We need to keep our testimony. What should be our testimony? We must please God. We can see so many people pleasers. And, and, and you know, we must please God. So these are the he walked by faith. 
He was an obedient man and he pleased God. He has taken away. Secondly, another man, Elijah, was caught up in the air. Elijah, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11 says, Then it happened, and they continued on and talked, and suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with the horses of fire and separated the two of them. Elisha went up a wild wind into heaven, and the rapture is happened. To Elijah. Another one in the New Testament. Acts chapter 8. Verse 39. You know the story of. Enoch. Sorry. Yeah. The eunuchs. Was getting baptized. Now when they came up. Out of the water. The spirit of the Lord caught Philip. Philip went and baptized this man from Ethiopia. So Philip ran through the desert and he came to the chariot and he baptized this man. The Lord had different plans for him. There was no, no airplane at that time. No trains, nothing. The Lord decided to rapture this man, take him out, snatch him forcefully. Without his permission. Philip. The Lord caught Philip. Away. So that. Uh, Enoch saw him no more. And he went. On his way rejoicing. There are examples in the Bible. About rapture. So this is a definite thing. It can happen at any time. Read Jesus Christ. Rapture. In the ascension, you know that. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up. All the disciples were watching. Jesus was talking to them. While they were all watching, he was taken up. And the cloud received him out of their sight. Sometimes you may wonder, oh, this is all, all, all stories or myth. How can I believe this rapture can happen? If I can just fly just like that, yes. No ticket needed, no airplane needed, nothing. What a beautiful situation. You will be in your busy schedule doing something. Suddenly you will disappear. Just imagine the pilot he is a born again believer. You are flying in the flying. The pilot will go. Just imagine what will happen to the plane. Just imagine the situation on the road. Many drivers will be gone. Chaos and collapse. A catastrophe no one can predict. But you are not in that group. You are not there anymore. You are caught up in the air. Hallelujah. It will be a glorious, glorious time. The rapture. I want Agape Church be rapture ready. I will be speaking about this. It's just an introduction. Any 27% of the Bible is prophetic scriptures. 27% of the Bible is prophetic scriptures. The rapture is the central event in biblical prophecy. 2 Timothy 4.8 says, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give it to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearance. Hallelujah. Second Peter 3.14 says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward 
to these things. Be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. So we need to be found without spot and blameless. The truth of the rapture is taught throughout the scriptures. John chapter 14 verse 2 says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it is not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. That is what the Lord is going to take each and every one of us. He said, I will prepare a place for you. But not an ordinary place. There's many, many mansions. So don't worry about mansions here. Let's prepare our life to receive him. And be ready. And get our act together. Walk in faith. Walk with the Lord. And follow his commandments. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 4. 16 through 17 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. We are waiting to hear that shout. The coming of the Lord. With the voice of an archangel. It will be a loud voice. Archangels will be crying unto the Lord. And with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. That's what I said, the meaning of rapture, the those who died, they will rise first. Then he who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That is called the rapture. And this, we shall always be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Always be with the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what the beauty of worshiping the Lord. That is the reason why we serve the Lord. This is the spoken, you know, this, the word is spoken by our Savior, you know, who said like this in John chapter 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, that's what Jesus said. I will come again and receive you to myself. Hallelujah. And that where I am, there you may be also. God's plan is to take us with him. The place he is in that we need to be with him. It's very important for us to understand and prepare our life. May I request the worship team please get ready. I will continue this series next week as well. According to Paul, Paul said, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in a moment, in the tinkling of an eye, just like this, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Hallelujah. There's a change happening. Things are going to be different. We need to remember the time that we are living in. We need to know the rapture and the second coming very clearly. I will be continuing the signs that is for us to follow. Since we don't know the time and the hour, we need to prepare ourselves to get ready. And understand things that we are seeing right now, all these wars and every nation is getting ready for something. So we need to be alert and prepare ourselves to understand what is happening. We are living the last days of this world. The end time is here. Child of God, it is not for us to be freak out. It is not for us to be worried and afraid. We are children of God. We have, we have the joy of the Lord. We need to be excited to be caught up in the air. 
and see our Savior face to face. Hallelujah. What a glorious moment. Let our hope arise. Let our faith be strengthened. Let our walk with God be proper. Prepare our life in such a way that the Lord will honor us. And we will not be left, left behind in this place when everyone else is caught up in the air. So plan our lives in such a way that we will receive our Savior in the air. Shall we stand in the presence of